Hi, hello, namaste to all my listeners. I'm your host, Sartak Varshne, and I welcome you all to the Balls of Steel show, where you get an insight into the business mindset of the entrepreneurs. Dhandoni Soch. Our today's guest is Mr. Sanjay Kaul. Hi, Hi, sir. How are you, sir? I'm very well, Sartak. And how are you doing? Right. Nowadays, when you ask I'm this good. question, how are you? Uh, at times, people get offended. You know what is happening around <laughs> in this COVID scenario. So everybody's uh, in a very, very tough, unpredictable situation. Right, 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 Mr. Sanjay. Okay, so uh, Mr. Sanjay, like uh, the question that I'm going to ask you now is that, what is that business that you're doing? Because of which we're going to say that you've got the balls of steel. Uh. Very interesting question. I think any successful right. entrepreneur uh, would have balls of steel because uh, right. you know there is a lot, a lot of uh, struggle, success, failures, you know, behind uh, the, that journey, and which probably is not visible. Mm-hmm. You only see the uh, you know uh, brighter part of the entrepreneurs. Uh, entrepreneurs, but there right. is not a lot right. of struggle which goes behind it. And if you tell me, in my case. Uh, I am into uh, rural marketing. We are a rural consulting agency, and uh, we advise brands how to go to uh, rural markets. And there's a, a plethora of uh, services which we offer to the lead brands of the country. That's number one. And uh, okay, I started this business uh, when, as a, a specialized uh, outfit, when there were giants like WPP, uh, uh, JWT, Lintas, Dove, these kind of uh, outfits has had these specialized uh, services. So I was the uh, only mm-hmm. privately held company in the space that time who took, uh, you know, this step of uh, doing, you know, uh, rural marketing. That's part one. Number two, I mm-hmm. started with nothing. So when I say nothing, so I had 40,000 rupees uh, from, uh, left with me, uh, apart from the money which I gave my wife to run the expenses for a year. So I spent right. uh, 40,000 bucks. Uh, decided to uh, traverse a path which actually was a fiefdom of big media giants. So that's how, uh, you know, I would probably answer your question. Okay, that's that's interesting. That's interesting, Sanjay. Okay, so uh, this, is, this is the company that you're running right now. And I look, uh, as far as I've seen your profile, you have established quite a few companies till now. So that's really great. Okay, so now the question that I'm going to ask you is, why don't you take us deeper into your journey from the point you started till the point you're standing here right now? Tell us everything in detail. What was it and how was it like and what what the journey has been, the ups and downs and everything? Yeah, I started, uh, you know, uh, my career initially with uh, Tata Economic Consultancy, which is now TCS, mm-hmm. merged with TCS uh, today. Then went back to Kashmir, came back uh, during the migration okay. period and very tough time. So again, the, I had to start life from zero. So came back, worked mm-hmm. for a while in Mudra. And in, at Mudra, I was a profit center head. And uh, I always had this entrepreneurship okay. bug, uh, you know, which was biting me constantly. So I wanted to create something mm-hmm. of, of my own. So year 1999, I decided to, because there was a lot of buzz around rural marketing. It was only a buzz. Right. And a lot of uh, this, right. I realized that this is uh, going forward. This is going to be, a, uh, if brands have to seek growth, uh, you know, they have to explore rural space. So that was the time, you know, I mm-hmm. started uh, this company called Impact Communications. So with a small team and a couple of them uh, came from Mudra with me and uh, so our basic uh, premise of startup was that, guys, uh, if we are earning uh, salaries, what we are taking today, we are not going to the office. Mm-hmm. If we are earning salaries, so we're good to go. And uh, so we didn't have you know, uh, a huge vision. We had a, a long-term vision was how do we build something great as a company? But on a, we had very, very short-term goals that how would we take step because there were limitations. There was a limitation of finance. Then the bigger limitation was uh, of equity. So on one side, you have mm-hmm. Obelivis of the world, 
JWTs of the world and on the other side you had we were almost non entity so only the mm-hmm. passion and the confidence we had that will make it uh, happen so that is what d- drove us and today uh, sarthak impact is the country's largest and leading uh, rural marketing outfit right so we know that right 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 so so now you're there and it's been a pretty pretty long journey since 1999 that's, Almost, that's really, really really long so we just completed 20 uh, across one year that's right okay so uh, sir now as just aapne bataya right ki what all happened so i'm going to dive deeper into this okay yeah. and uh, i'm going to take you back in time and then i'm going to ask you ki you'll have to pull out your instances from that point so you told me that you know when you started you started with nothing but that was around 40000 rupees right. and you gave the rest of the money to your wife and told her ki, uh, that you've got to manage your ear with this so what was that time like what was the support like how did she support you and what all did you do with that 40000 to be precise uh, my wife had a confidence that this guy is going to do something so that's why she didn't crib or she said okay what makes you happy you do it but i promised her at the same time because you know i had two kids that time uh, and uh, taking a decision at at that time is very very you know it becomes very tough you know, if a youngster is unmarried he doesn't have to stay, you know feed the family it, that is much mm-hmm. much lesser so right uh, that was one and uh, i told her fine if if it works give me a year uh i will take it forward otherwise uh, job kar lenge koi baat nahi but i had a huge conviction that this is going to work but uh, when i started so while uh, you know uh, in initial times i was very conscious of my strengths and weaknesses a i came from odra so okay. i knew what a media agency can do and can't do so i mm-hmm. strengthen the areas where can't do area unka aur wahan maine apna business Mm-hmm. जो मॉड्यूल है द बिजनेस प्लान सो आई क्राफ्टेड द बिजनेस प्लान अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट आई विल जस्ट गिव एन एग्जांपल आई डिड नॉट शो आई डिड नॉट पोजीशन माय सेल्फ इंपैक्ट एज अ कंप्लीट रूरल मार्केटिंग यू नो 360 डिग्री सॉल्यूशन प्रोवाइडर सो वी पिक वन मॉड्यूल ऑफ सर्विसेज व्हिच सेड वी विल डू मेला मार्केटिंग यू नो व्हेन आई डोंट नो व्हेदर यू अंडरस्टैंड मेला मार्केटिंग मेला मार्केटिंग इज बेसिकली यू हैव ऑल दिस कुंभ्स हैपनिंग sonpur mela all this so brand right right you have right. audience ready so you get mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. so we try to engage and sell and you know do a lot of activities around these melas so what right. why there was a there was a very strong reason why we uh, thought of doing it a we were conscious we don't have money so essentially mm-hmm. uh, we need something month on month maybe every quarter which is happening and it gets a uh, re- you know revenue is flowing in the company. revenue to right 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 it gave us opportunity also to interact with multiple clients so we were not speaking to one we would speak to multiple clients so the relationship would build with the multiple clients they have mm-hmm. at regular intervals so the frequency of interaction was very very high uh operating right. from delhi but when you talk rural marketing so we are going to talk india so the need is pan india so what we did we picked, right picked up uh, these prop- properties around Uh, across country so it would have it was would have been wiser for me to do something in maybe north because why i was based out of delhi but we picked up conscious mm-hmm. we melas in uh, kerala se trushur puram uh, or rakhyata puri or uh, or uh, you know devgarh mela uh, in bihar or sonpur mela in bihar so essentially to give mm-hmm. position with the client that we can operate pan india though we had no offices but we, we tried to you know i used to travel almost uh, 10 months in a year in the initial uh, you know uh, phase of our business so that gave us a good okay. understanding and uh, we understand uh, the consumer very well then step by step then we repositions once the cash uh, started building up uh, reserves started building up mm-hmm. and uh, then we uh, launched the complete outfit we had created certain properties so th- we had a very short term goal and a long term vision so we, i would i would not chase the long term goal uh, without you know having those uh, milestones passed because that, that would ensure the cash flow that will also ensure my relationship with the client clients and i also build an equity with the clients so that's how we started that's that's nice sir 
that's really in- interesting okay so my next question uh, from the story that you're telling me is uh, you also mentioned that when you started there were limitations of finances and there were limitations of equity that's right right so how did you and your team tackle this thing because when we look at equities firstly i want to dive deeper into this like what uh, what are uh, what kind of equities are we talking about equities with clients or equities among the partners uh, or in terms of the your right. uh, brand equity impact as a brand okay so you were okay. almost okay. non entity so on one side the challenge was you had obelbees of the world lintas of the world in the same space mm-hmm. who had already a very strong relationship with the clients that's number one and right. more I had right. AOR with the client, so the fishing for them was much easier than uh, for us. So we, but we created a very differentiated business model, which enabled us to acquire these clients. Maybe on a very very short term project basis, but that built that mm-hmm. laid a foundation for our long term relationship. So we continued right. for one or two years. Post that, mm-hmm. uh, we encountered a major challenge. So what happened in the process? Uh, Mm-hmm. So my competitors would go to the client and tell them, if you want to do mailers or you know you want to do mailer marketing, Impact is a fantastic agency. Go, but for entire rural solution, come to us. So in fact, my positioning start started becoming a challenge for me. You know, I I was actually limited uh, in that restricted domain. So half of the time, you know, they would call me a mailer marketing agency. So what we decided then, okay. yeah, it was a big challenge. So. What that was a big challenge. Yeah. Right. So in the process, what we did, we told our team, we are not selling Mela. Because by that time, we were already having a huge equity with the clients that we are the best Mela agency. And honestly speaking, they were, if anybody would uh, you know need to do us, they would come to us uh, for Mela market. Mm-hmm. So, but we consciously decided that we are not going to talk about Mela's. Now we are going to reposition ourselves. Our coffers were... Uh, quite comfortable uh, mm-hmm. relationship with a large set of clients was in place. Our understanding and network across geography was uh, built by that time. So then we mm-hmm. went next, uh, you know, few steps ahead. Right, right, right. So basically, it took you two years to first establish your uh, image that was initially as the mailer marketing agency, and then you started pushing out yourself completely as uh, as a rural consulting right. agency. We could have done that from day one, but that could have been mm-hmm. a lot of challenge uh, to us. Essentially, choosing between somebody who is already you know having a high equity and at the same time, uh, lack of finances would have actually derailed our uh, if there would have not been continuous. Inflow that would have actually made us lose a lot of business, so we would have lost face with the clients, you know, not able to take uh, that kind of a business. So, uh, so we had, we had, you know, as I said, we had set milestones. You know, this is a milestone. Mm-hmm. This is then when I said we wanted to do something which they cannot do. So what we did, we all right. backward integration. So uh, if you look at uh, our kind of marketing, you know, in a rural marketing, what we usually say. It is lesser of ideas, more of execution. Right. Yeah. So you tend right, to right, right. most of the companies uh, outsource it to the local vendors. So we try to build right. our own uh, production house, uh, a fleet uh, to you know take our uh, campaigns to the rural. So we try to backwards so, to maximize our profit. So we build strength on two counts: a, a control on execution; b, mm-hmm. optimizing the cost. So we actually yeah. were able to give better value to the clients at that time, you know. So see, because I was not outsourcing it to vendors, so because the quantum of business uh, was not that very uh, big, so it was manageable. So mm-hmm. we invested whatever profits we used to generate. We invested parallelly we, uh, year on year uh, in the backward integration. So we created a very strong backward integration, which worked as an USP for us as a company. So we would go and tell them, look here. Even if you view business mm-hmm. with the competitor, we have a huge backward integration. We are our turnaround time is great. We have better controls, and we will ensure quality. So, in terms of the execution, so that that worked in our favor. That's a nice strategy. Yeah. So that's literally a nice strategy <laughs> during that time. That's nice. Okay, 
so that is one thing to look at uh, now if i talk about uh, oh, like you left mudra and uh, mudra being a marketing agency and you had some experience from there and definitely working with big uh, such companies you get client connect also so when you started your business so how did you get the clients you used your previous connections or uh, did you go and start approaching new clients so what was your we had uh, you know client connects uh, there was a very small team of two three people so we had very uh, good connect but we used the only uh, greater differentiator in our business idea was the idea was very very different so i will tell you uh, how we started uh, what was the business idea uh, right this was something that we were doing very unique so what we did uh, brands used to foray into uh, you know these melas previously but the hmm. cost of uh, you know participation was pretty pretty high because you know uh, my competitors would uh, approach a client and probably approach one client and take him to a mill mm-hmm. now understand the entire costing the land cost the erection cost or engagement cost was all built to one client so what i did at impact was i created a series of uh, these events which i called great country fair and a series of events where i, I pitched at one tenth of the cost to multiple brands so rather than taking one brand i worked on the more on the economies of scale and okay. so i would probably divide that cost on multiple brands so that actually worked in our favor a we would make more money but at the same time uh, we would also engage with more clients and that also give us uh, opportunity to uh, create ideas for multiple brands so when you have four the brands participating with that the need is very very different you have consumer durables agri input guy or implement guy or one side consumer durable fmcg so when you have a, uh, multiple brands participating in one platform so you, it gives you actually an as sharpens your you know ideation skills and at the same time you know uh, provide a great value to them which previously there were there was a huge barrier so, and in those times i will just give an uh, example so if, mm. if a brand would individually participate you will have to spend 8 to 10 lakh rupees mm. i got that cost down to 15000 rupees 20000 rupees oh. so it was a triple okay. uh, you know uh, so brand should not need much thinking uh, to do in terms of participation right 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 oh my god that's a, that's a huge thing okay so that's that's a lot of brains that you put in at that time so must say so uh, i want to talk about this brain and mindset only because what i can see is that uh, even at that time you have tried and killed the competition in a very strategic manner that, right and uh, i would not say kill i would say take on the competition uh, strongly <laughs> and uh, in the process you know it uh, gradually gave us access to a lot of so the client also built a huge confidence in us and uh, right. that uh, that notion or a perception that only a big agency can you know uh, tackle it so that was completely eroded right 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 but so this thing this literally sounds very very interesting to me and uh, there must be a story behind this so i'm going to ask you very bluntly mm. what was it that you did because of which you got the costing down from 7 8 lakhs to 15 to 20000 rupees that's right now was it <laughs> so i want to know that story yeah you see i just give an example i would uh, and that was also sure. you know once they, uh, i created a mela within a mela you understand okay so ratnatra puri itself has got say uh, audiences coming in they come for a particular purpose so i used to create mm-hmm. a environment within that uh, mela itself so, you know uh, negotiate with authorities take land there fabricate then back end our team would you know ideate for individual brands so that uh, also and when people used to participate rather than seeing one brand uh, stall in a, a one isolation one corner of uh, that mela so when you get all of them together at one place it was really really you know interesting for even consumer for ex- uh, from an experience point of view great for the consumers also to see multiple brands at one place yeah and uh, telling you very honestly now uh, in uh, certain places after uh, our right. properties have now become integral part of mela now if you go to kullu uh, you know uh-huh. the dashera happening over there kullu dashera right so i was the guy who started right. uh, you know this country fair there 
and it is happening for last 20 years now there now uh, kulu mela the entire population of kulu knows that this mela is going to happen we are going to buy tv tractor gadi uh, fmcg there are schemes running in so it becomes a mela within a mela so that's how that legacy is still you know uh, relevant in today's times wow that is literally very very bring so wow that's that's very insightful how how you got this thing rolling okay i i i'm i'm in love with that okay so uh coming back from your initial days so uh, so so when any entrepreneur starts right from when he has a family and stuff and you start leaving a job definitely your wife did support you and you already told about the financial condition at that point of time but what was the response from your family side as in your parental side your in law side because talking to many people i've heard you know what time bahut bar aise hua hai ki rishtedar aa jate hain honestly speaking you know you are actually taking me into times uh right i uh, lost lot of uh, uh, relationships uh, in terms of my relatives because i could not attend weddings uh they were sulking and then uh, i had to compromise a lot with a lot of family time because they i couldn't create that balance of uh, work and uh, family because they were, uh, i was so passionate to make it happen so i had to travel a lot mm-hmm. and uh, there are costs honestly speaking and essentially there were a lot of uh, advisors unsolicited advices that why the hell are you doing this because you know and half the time i could not explain my parents what i'm going to do what i'm doing so you know they would not understand uh, rural marketing so for them it was a very very, very new uh, kind of an animal and uh, they thought you know i don't know i'm is doing something there and uh, but by end of the day uh, when they realized that my uh, affluence started uh, happening mm-hmm. so they became, they could understand that he is doing something uh, great so it and uh, those uh, you know relatives who were not even uh were talking for a very long time so today they probably half of them say we are very inspired by what you have done because i'm the first generation entrepreneur in my family right 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 so so matlab your story even when we are going back in time and your story is proving it time and again that pehle rishtedar gali denge uske baad sab maan jayenge nahi wo nahi hai wo i'm bada interesting cheez hai sarthak आप बिलीव नहीं करोगे मैंने कभी बहुत टाइम तक पांच साल तक हमने कैसे बिल्ड करा यू नो कैपिटल इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन मैं बहुत सारे एम्प्लॉय से कम सैलरी लेता था सो आई वाज आई वाज इन फैक्ट आई यूज टू पे मोर मनी टू द यू नो एम्प्लॉयज एंड टेक लेसर सैलरी बिकॉज आई वाज नॉट ऑफर द मनी आई वाज ऑफर द आफ्टर द पर्पज एंड आई न्यू द प्रॉफिट विल फॉलो सो whatever uh, surpluses would happen so all the surpluses were pumped back in the company to make it bigger and mm-hmm. bigger you know investments in terms of hiring talent, talent uh, or backward integration so at the same time we also invested in a uh, lot of uh, you know we owned a couple of offices we have a factory of mm-hmm. essentially i knew you know in the times of uh, financial challenges i need something to bank on because if i am big mm-hmm. tomorrow if i need, need to right. handle a 100 project or a 50 crore project so how do why do i get the money i won't borrow and i have was probably a very very old school of thought uh, thinker so i why do i need a partner uh, in terms of a bank so i will rather create resources where i can you know mortgage anything and borrow if i if need arises so we created a lot of assets within the organization mm-hmm. created ba- backward integration so that's how i uh, built it back that's that's nice that's nice so you've been actually managing your money well so that is one way to look at it and from this part only i'm going to pick another question which is in which i'm going to try to relate your present scenario and your struggling days as well so you already told us that you know you put your money back into the business and you invested in a lot of stuff so that is one thing but what was going through your head about money management because managing money is never an easy task when you're trying to set up a business that's true so how how you did tackle that uh, problem like give me more details apart from what you already gave me right now see if you if you don't have uh, enough uh, as i told you you know in today's times 
finances are available you know uh, you have got a lot of investors coming in people uh, invest with you uh, along with your risk uh, but mm-hmm. in those times generating money from a bank would mean that essentially if you have a collateral you will get money there were hardly any investors mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, who would happily participate and number 2 i was very conscious that i am going to make it big so it's too early for me to disinvest so that was uh, one thing which was going behind my head so i thought let me build capital within the organization i was still living in a uh, small flat i was still had a very very uh, basic car so mm-hmm. that's how i uh, for more than 5 6 years i didn't you know uh, have a luxury a very high quality life so entire money was pumped so that's how the uh, you know this capital was built within the organization number 2 i invested in talent i thought you know uh, it is better to invest in talent rather than me taking a large chunk of the money home if i have a better talent it grew, the business will grow and on a longer term i will probably you know this will uh, be more profitable so uh, i normally hire a leadership person uh, in, you know i just see that whether he knows one or two things more than me which i can't do uh-huh. so when you when you have that kind of a, a talent acquisition strategy so then you need to invest also so i used to invest in a good quality talent so because it's not a single man's job it's a team work so my leader right, was right. high quality and honestly speaking fortunately uh, some of them are with me for almost for one to two decades working with me Uh, these must be the people you started with That's from right. uh, mudra yeah. so they were part of the entire journey so that uh, actually uh, you know helped a lot uh, in terms of you know that that founding pillars were very very strong right 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 i i can completely understand so so on this very note i want to ask you this that you started off and with you as you already told us that these people from mudra came along with you from uh, so from mudra so 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 three people yes yeah this this was very small team but you had the vision yeah. right if i'm not wrong to say that so how did you convince them when the things were falling apart uh, during the hard times and if they wanted to leave how did you make them stick to you that no it's going to work and things going to happen what was that struggle like uh, give me some insights from there uh, you know if uh, honestly speaking i have a very very uh, you know inherent trait of not giving up and uh, as okay. in this entire journey we had multiple hiccups i would not say uh, any failure or anything but we had multiple hiccups in terms of uh, functioning you know uh, because when you when you talk of uh, rural market it is largely you know execution on ground and when there are humans involved so there are there is a lot of uh, possibility that uh, hum- uh, because of the humans the errors can happen so right uh, i would function very inclusively you know inclusively in the sense i would rather lead them from a front in initial years so i would mm-hmm. probably be part of that uh, you have to troubleshoot that i'll just give an example uh, one of my clients gsk i am i have a relationship working relationship with gsk it goes almost more than a decade now uh, wow, okay. we took an assignment for iodex and Mm-hmm. it was a rural outreach a massive outreach and my team screwed up they went there and they could somehow you know one or two days they could not manage it because it was a massive roll out mm-hmm. uh, the business lead would come back to me very very she was she was very depressed you know what happened you know we took out such a big account and uh, all of a sudden you know things started to- toppling so mm-hmm. i said don't worry i took the owners of going to the client told him give us two days time we'll revamp it and we won't charge you for these two days and i started taking that entire uh, fallout on my head you know i just did not want my person to get demoralized or you know hmm. understand that this is this is i i did not disown that challenge you know as an as a head of the family i thought it's my responsibility own that challenge so Mm-hmm. even that kind of an attitude so you have a, the confidence of the uh, uh, you know uh, team, leadership team that we can bank on somebody so mm-hmm. they will go along with you and take a risk of doing things yeah so that's how my entire team was very 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 dedicated uh, in terms of functioning they would see that you know if there are challenges koi kuch 
गड़बड़ भी हो जाएगी कुछ भी हो जाएगा एग्जीक्यूशन में कोई प्रॉब्लम हो गई संजय है सो ही विल बैक एस आप सो आई ऑलवेज यूज यू नो देर आर इवन वी वी आर वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट यू नो हाइस्ट अवार्ड विनिंग एजेंसी इन रूरल टूडे एंड सो वेन एवर देर आर देर आर अवार्ड्स आई वी डोंट गो आई डोंट गो टू द स्टेज आई लेट द टीम टू एंजॉय दैट टाइम enjoy that uh, you know uh, sense of victory but if there is a challenge i would the full, still even today be the first person okay. to actually own that uh, challenge or you know help them in grappling with that challenge so okay. that's how they they stuck to us and number 2 and then uh, apart from this this is not only uh, people don't seek only monetary gains within an organization they also see mm-hmm. seek that you know independent i have created various levels of entrepreneurship in my organization so all these oldies who okay. are with me they are entrepreneurs in themselves they take instant decisions now since they have donkey years of experience of handling things and that has helped mm-hmm. scale up so because uh, i have one of the agencies a uh, friend you know who started as an agency big name but ultimately uh, the person one name became bigger than the organization so i did not create sanjay kohl as a face of the organization i create impact as a uh, organizational face and then a strong leadership which is entrepreneurial uh, uh, in nature and who create their own mm-hmm. uh, you know leaders or own subsets uh, within the organization wow that's 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 nice that's nice okay so so this thing of creating various levels of entrepreneurship Uh, entrepreneurs within the organization this is really new for me as well and uh, i would love to learn that how this thing works in your organization and like i on the only thing i can understand as of now is that the people who have been working they are they are also an entrepreneur and probably running another business along with working yours if i'm not wrong in saying that i will tell you how how do you how do, how do you create an entrepreneur within an organization now haan ji please if you delegate a subset of assignment to them and give them a business target and tell them okay now you go and chase these numbers and do it i think that is a very i i i don't do i i find that very flawed uh, way of you know uh, functioning we make okay. i make a very conscious uh, effort to make an entire business plan for them which is very very inclusive how they are going to achieve it why are they are going to achieve how they are going, i'm going to delegate it and then leave it to them if they do mistakes doesn't matter that mistakes actually we will tackle that but if you don't give that kind of an ownership uh, to the leadership team so you can't create entrepreneurship within the organization because if you are always on their head and you know uh, pestering them or you know uh, hand holding them every now and then leave it to them have a confidence that gives them a huge liberty of functioning as an entrepreneur and number 2 making them conscious build a very transparency i Uh, in our system also our leadership team is very very conscious on the uh, rois so what kind of a money mm-hmm. they are generating from the client what is the actual uh, you know investment on this they really know what kind of a earning they are uh, doing in this so in that uh, context also that also helps us in terms of justifying our payouts to the people so nobody can challenge you know if somebody we have youngsters who have started with 40k kind of Five lakh kind of a salary per annum, and today taking thirty-six lakh in just two to three years of time. So essentially, we also don't, uh, you know, uh, have people uh, here growing because they are there for a uh, while. Not we. It's a completely performance-driven uh, approach. And number two, delegating maximum responsibilities to them and empowering them in terms of the responsibilities. So that has helped us to scale up. Sarthak, because. i am working with almost 50 brands uh, on an annual basis and very demanding okay. so when i talk about working with 50 brands if we don't sharpen their mm-hmm. skill sets on multiple things they are, have a uh, visibility how operations happens how creative has to happen and then uh, lead the team so that helps us to actually they do multitasking they are also able to uh, delegate things so that creates a great uh, leadership within uh, the organization that's that's a lovely way so of working making things work in the organization and creating entrepreneurs that's that's really amazing from this part only i have a question that uh, 
I see sometimes happening in terms of partnerships in different organizations, mm. and uh, and even in the smaller organizations, I've seen this happening not directly but indirectly. I've at least observed it from at different different levels and different uh, organizations. So my question is that when you t- uh, told us right now that you know uh, your uh, leaders they all know and they are all transparent in terms of costings and how much you're charging the client and all those things. So doesn't it at any point of time backfire or uh, anything of that sort you know that ki mera business chala jayega ya phir he might start another agency because at that point this leader is your asset absolutely in every and company's asset as well and he or she has the full capability of leaving the next one and starting the organization or maybe leaking the data or confidentiality there's a lot of stuff that yeah, can happen about- so how do you deal with this kind of mindset and this kind of you know problem if it at all arises sarthak very 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 interesting question and fantastic question essentially that is a major challenge you know uh, which most of the organizations actually are very very scared of uh, doing uh, you know business in such a manner that kisi din ye chala jayega employee both ki account ko handle kar raha hai aur anda bhi haath se jayega honestly right. you know why if you recall in my conversation i said we made this business faceless faceless in the sense it was not one person dependent every person there there is also a backup plan in uh, strategy so now no one account you will have to there is a target for a leader to you know uh, disconnect with that account and delegate it to somebody else so one is the shifting of accounting uh, irrespective of the fact that at times we had resistance from the clients uh, mm-hmm. you don't change the person because they have a comfort level up but we are strictly following a rule wherein people will not create, uh, assume that this is our freedom that particular handling that account is uh, my freedom or you know i am nurturing that account so i will hold it till i am here that is one mm-hmm. number two so there is there is also a risk mitigation that if uh, tomorrow he or she exits from the organization do we have uh, number 2 in place that is number 2 right. number 3 there's a larger uh, you know strategy in place where the management uh, key management people would actually you know build that account i will tell you very honestly i have not i have not faced of the business in the organization now for almost 7 uh, 8 years so i only okay. going to meetings where in client needs a confidence if there's a very big uh, initiative so i would initially probably be part of the, just to give a client confidence that i am uh, there so uh, n- nothing to worry so but mm-hmm. it is delegated to the next uh, level of leadership so we are not been scared in last 20 years we haven't even lost even one account uh, to people and then when you work with the clients they understand there are people mm-hmm. behind it how much uh, uh, you know uh, how much is, uh, equity this company has what kind of a bandwidth they have and in our kind of business it's not only you know you just give an idea sell an idea to the client but you have to execute and building that network right. across india it, you can't beat it overnight so we have over 20 years built a huge network in the country so i'll just give an example for i have got almost 1000 mm-hmm. plus people on ground in 14 states of the country so so creating that kind of an arm overnight is not possible for anyone Uh, so no, clients, clients know today what kind of a strength we bring on, bring on table what kind of financial capacity we have to invest with them and uh, fortunately we have you know my aging with my uh, most of the key clients the top 10 clients is of more than a decade now so it has it's, it comes you know if you start business uh, business with that vulnerability mindset then you act uh-huh. uh, doing more harm than protecting your business then one should not be in that business so are you creating a strong equity with the client in terms of as an organization as a team because one particular individual will not be sufficing for the organization usne aapka account yahan se yahan liya lekin uske back end par jo uske piche hard work jati hai uski creative support jata hai operational support hota hai financial support hota hai so does it doesn't come in a jiffy in any other organization and there are also mm-hmm. rules in place you know we also have feedback mechanism wherein uh, management team also has an interface with the client so there is a there is a review mechanism every quarter with our key key accounts where our management will visit ensure if there are any gaps in terms of the service deliverables so all those things are mechanic mechanisms are in place uh, we had couple of resistances and honestly speaking and some key people uh, leaving the organization 
but honestly speaking because half of the rural marketing industry uh, if you look at today will have my man there will be somebody from impact but it has not eroded our business it has in fact we have grown year on year excepting for this covid crisis year uh, means uh, from listening to this it makes me feel like you know irrespective uh, even if the the few employees are talking about have left and even if they are working somewhere else you are just becoming bigger and bigger and you know that you know you you're the bigger man because you know how to run the show again and again after that and you can still come up with a strategy with which you can you know <laughs> in my in I, my I, words kill the competition but you, you our uh, functioning with the clients is not transactional telling you very honestly sarthak uh, i have I right. to build a more of a uh, value creation or a inclusion with the clients rather than a transaction. I will not say there are not transactional kind of uh, you know clients with us, but I don't call them clients. I call them simply you know the uh, SOS clients. They have a need. They come to us. That is maybe maybe twenty percent kind of a business of uh, impact. So if you can larger uh, business, it is long term. It is very sustained. And uh, honestly speaking, on a client side also, uh, you know it's it's always. they would work with a known devil than an unknown devil uh, that's that's for sure <laughs> that's that's for sure we're putting up such huge amounts of money everyone they needs are, some sort of assurance their jobs on the line because they would also understand what kind of bandwidth the agency can tackle so what is the turnaround time uh, do they have capacity to troubleshoot so all those three factors come into play definitely definitely this is this is interesting so this is very interesting right so uh, this is these these did come uh, this story that shows a lot of challenges and the stuff that you've been doing but now what i want to ask you is a uh, very upfront questions where where you also said that you know there were hiccups that you faced and uh, multiple hiccups so i want to know about that biggest hiccup that you faced and which probably broke you down or was a huge hit for you and the company how you tackled it and what you learned from it uh i think not many smaller uh, hiccups here and there you know they, i think that is almost a part of our business but uh, mm-hmm. if you look at a major major uh, i recall one or two instances i will tell you one instance was uh, uh we took uh, marketing rights of hardwar kum few years back uh, right. the entire kum mela so exclusive mm-hmm. uh, for outdoors the rest of the engagements stalls branding gates have arches uh, every everything was with us so we won those rights and then outdoor was tackled by the local uh, you know players who already had sites there so we consciously did not want to venture into that area because they year wait for a, a entire year to make some quick buck in that time so we thought you know it's better not to you know create those enemies in that space so we did not bid for it. right so what happened incidentally some kind of a dispute happened between administration and these outdoor guys so okay. it went to the court so what we started marketing uh, our mela so i think the property uh, the cost of the property was uh, close some 3 4 crore rupees what would that was the fee which we you know invested so more than right. the, when we started marketing we had almost uh, 60 odd brands participating over there and uh, we had almost sold every mela 135 km kind of a uh, expanse and uh, all mm-hmm. of a sudden some the dispute between their outdoor agency and uh, mela administration happened and uh, high court of uh, uttarakhand gave complete stay on the mm-hmm. uh, on the entire advertising uh, this thing so we have sold okay we have uh, sold six, uh, to it to 60 brands we have uh, almost 10 15 crores of revenues at stake and not a matter of revenue the more was we have already paid the administration then the biggest challenge was we would lose face with so many brands uh, because this fiasco happened so my guy right. operational people who were sitting in hardwar they called me up they said this is what happened what do we do will they try i said guys if it is a court case it can go anywhere and uh, then we had it and it is a big blow because we will more than money we could have sustained the losses but we could not we cannot sustain the loss of face or equity with the brands and uh, mm-hmm. we need to troubleshoot it so all of them were just uh, really really crippled how to do it i said okay fine the courts were uh, 
in uh, nanital there were some uh, you know holidays in between and uh, courts were functioning on a very lean kind of a uh, structure so i mm-hmm. went to nanital and they said we will just hire a, a lawyer and uh, tell him to you know plead our case i said no fine you just do one thing i'll come over i'll just brief him and then because briefing that uh, lawyer was very very critical that time right. so right. My, that my uh, temptation of you know uh, leading a trouble by fr- uh, from the front so i went to nanital and i realized the lawyer we have hired through some uh, acquaintance was basically mm-hmm. a service lawyer now service lawyer will normally have expertise in terms of uh, the job ka idhar nahi hua transfer hua hua salary nahi mil rahi hai now he has no clue of advertising branding so i said what do we do so i told he to he said just brief me uh, you know in the middle of that i told him sir aap ek kaam kariye aap pehla sara apne din ka jitna aapka schedule hai khatam kar le i will sit you do for one hour and i will be out of this so i had to almost sarth uh, give him the entire courtroom spiel Right. I had to actually take him to. I I knew that it would be my futile exercise if I make him understand what is branding, what is. So I gave him five seven cues of uh, how he should plead the case, and uh, right. he was you know we were part of certain essential services like uh, mm-hmm. providing road uh, signages, uh, sh- shops which will provide uh, these puja samagris. So I. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you go to the court and talk to them you know we are branding so many clients and bala bala they will not understand they will not be empathetic to the cause so you basically mm-hmm. need to highlight uh, a that there are certain services which are essential for the pilgrims and mm-hmm. so hence that is at stake b tell him you cannot delay it because time is the essence mela will have finish in 45 days and if you delay it for one month so it is gone so people will suffer they will know the road sign so i had to actually give him the entire spiel so fortunately uh, for us sarthak this happened uh, you will not believe within one hearing the stay was removed and, oh my god and within one hearing and he uh, the judge or honorable judge called up the administration there and then faxed the copy there and then and said because the how you position it and uh, and the, the fee which i had decided with this guy he i told him how much money you want he said i want a 1 lakh something i said i give you 2 lakhs but focus on this and this should be the speed so that is one thing yeah. if you have a will of you know fighting it out and you will you one can overcome uh, any challenge telling you very honestly so that is that, that is for that one trait you know and somehow uh, that trait has been you know my key leadership team has that kind of an attitude now you know not of giving up otherwise if we have given up and what happened incidentally that uh, holding wala uh, guys went to supreme court and mela had mm-hmm. uh, uh, wo do saal teen saal tak case chalta raha unka mm-hmm. so i'm just telling you one has to have an entrepreneur has to have a resilience you know and and had a passion of fighting back so if you fight back uh, you can win some of the battles Some said this was a huge battle, and the way you won it—that's literally a story. And this is a very, uh, very uh, inspiring and, story. And, and honestly speaking, uh, we used to get a frantic calls from the clients. What is happening? Uh, and I don't know what kind of a conviction I had, as if I was just judge myself. I was telling them, please cool down. We will tackle it. And you know, in our my inner hearts, it was almost you know my blush, uh, blood was gushing, and I was so worried what is going to happen because you can't control the court proceedings. But right. yeah, so if you if you tactically and thoughtfully, if you don't lose cool in those times, uh, there's every possibility that you can win any challenge. Uh, yeah. So this is amazing. And, and amazing. Similar challenge in one of the. I will just give an example. I will not name the department. The one of the government. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. Right. So one of the we got a uh, one of the depart uh, brief uh, to promote uh, the current. Uh, you know uh, uh, this government initiatives uh, right. in the rural areas and right it was something like uh, 300 vans uh, to do in 6 7 days almost an impossible kind of a job so i got called from right. a person uh, from a government department and he almost called me and said 
Sanjay ji, my job is at stake. And if you don't do it, it is almost a gunpoint on my head. And uh, I will lose my job, and but I will ensure that I will not uh, give you a single penny of business from this uh, department. So it was almost a blackmail. It was almost a gunpoint on my head and uh, to do it. So I just called my team. So again, you know, these kind of challenges, but we honestly speaking, I think uh, at times, Sarthak, we have got a habit of, you know, uh, functioning the best under pressure right. and getting the team. So, but then, you know, you need to build that kind of an attitude with the entire team. So, right, really right, proud, right. you know, I have got some of the best people working with me today, you know, who have got uh, imbibed those kind of uh, traits and uh, working very good for the organization. Right. So, so how, what what happened after that? Just please complete the story. Was like, you how did you pull off that challenge? Where well, you then we had to pull off the entire organization. We had to halt uh, certain ongoing campaigns, and you know, probably put them on an outsourcing model. And my entire senior leadership, which was supposed not supposed to do operations, had to be on yeah. ground. So we almost for uh, seven eight days. Uh, most of my men, including me, uh, we were not sleeping. So we were almost working 18 hours, 19 hours kind of capacity a day. So we, but we sailed through. We uh, and with flying colors. Wow! My God! My God! These these are literally amazing, amazing stories. But we did not get frustrated, uh, Sarthak, that time that we could tell him, "Okay, sir, no, it's over." Hamse. But the temptation was, uh, you know, it was a, it was some 23 crore rupees assignment. But having said that, mm. uh, more than mm. money. It was more of you know losing equity that with that organization. So because you know one of right. is, what is your capacity of turnaround? So even that tomorrow mm-hmm. you have they have an assignment and they want to turn do a quick uh, rollout. So then you already already have positioned yourself with them that you know this is this, these guys have a capacity to do this. I can completely agree to that. I can agree to that. That's that's an amazing story. These two stories are super duper amazing. Nice. Okay. Okay. So, sir, uh, I mean, I'm I'm actually losing side of questions. What I could ask, but yes, I do have questions with me that I would love to know. So, uh, since the starting of your journey and all these things, you have positioned yourself in in a very different manner and something which is very, you know insightful and something which is very different from the regular entrepreneurs because as you said that you are not the face of the company and there are multiple leaders inside the company who take the lead and a lot of stuff that you already told because nowadays you know when we are working every entrepreneur wants to be the face of the company because definitely comes with name fame and everything that's right alongside so with that said what i wanted to ask is that uh, first of all didn't you ever get this thought ki yaar, if I'm not being the face and the company is there so but this is my thing I have got this I had this vision I got it from grounds up so didn't you ever give, get this feeling or the mindset if you if you did get this how did you tackle it and the number second thing that I want to add to this question only is that do you are you a money minded person when you talk about this business because it's a huge huge ass business and uh, um, so how do you deal with those two thoughts? How do you position yourself? Yeah, Sarthak, A, I am very, very media shy. And I will tell you, we did two, three things very consciously. I did not make okay. noise about what we are doing in the space because which most of the, my competitors would, you know, do a particular thing and then tom tom about it so much. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to wake them up, uh, what we are doing, how we are doing. That was one conscious strategy that we will not, you know, who should know me is the industry, my clients. That is more important to me Mm -hmm. rather than an individual. But ultimately, the kind of the work, uh, kind of the, you know, recognition the industry gave me, you know, I became a face of the industry body. I am a a Mm. four-time, you know, president of Rural Marketing Association of India. Uh, Today, I am... Yes, I I am. So, I am chairing their uh, advisory board. So, essentially... uh, it is not because, you know, I contested or what. It was only the my fraternity recognized my effort and this thing. I did not do anything consciously, which today's startups do. You know, they would uh, do articles and stuff like that. I only, mm-hmm. you know, was very, very conscious the assignments which are given to me, the mandates which are within the organization, how well they are doing it. 
and word of mouth played a great role for us uh, to you know scale up the business get the business results that's number one number two mm-hmm. i did not seek uh, recognition from the fraternity i got it automatically so from being a member founding member of the association i was uh, you know uh, youngest president of the uh, euro marketing association and and had i wanted i could have still been the president but i you know the fatigue sank in i thought it's better to leave at uh, uh, when you when you are doing we have done the best because after that you are raising bar for yourself so you do, you can't uh, you know go down that bar so i did a fabulous job there highly appreciate it and that's why i'm today on the advisory board uh, in, and i still i'm very very active i'm very passionate about uh, doing good for the industry that's part one part two yeah. never my you know hit me i'm a very media shy person uh, otherwise nowadays if we do some article so i will just give one uh, you know comment here and there but we t- uh, do fantastic uh, work work should be, uh, as an organization we uh, speak as impacts work rather than sanjay calls uh, uh, as a promoter who is doing this work that mm-hmm. and uh, number two money minded on the account of money minded i will tell you very honestly in, initially i told you initial goal was salary tak paisa aa raha to theek kar rahe hain नहीं कर रहे वो तो पहला गोल था लेकिन जब आप ग्रो करते हो तो ग्रोथ के साथ वो पैंग्स आते हैं देर आर प्रेशर्स यू नो नाउ टुडे आई नीड ह्यूज मनी टू एक्चुअली आई वॉट थ्री हंड्रेड ऑर्ड एम्प्लॉज वन थाउजेंड पीपल फुट ऑन सोल्जर फ्लीट ऑन ग्राउंड सो दैट्यूज काइंड ऑफ अ मसल वी हैव टू सस्टेन वी नीड ये वी नीड टू चेज मनी बट मनी डज नॉट आई एम नॉट मनी माइंडेड per se i will tell you very very uh, very very uh, strange thing that probably that will give you a window uh, how, whether i am a money minded person or not sure, yeah, given this kind of a structure we have not laid off a single employee from the organization okay so in this covid scenario because till okay. march we have made money so we have done only pay cuts and that too with a, in in collaboration and understanding with our leadership team and we have mm-hmm. i am not taking salary for the entire year so i have told them i can afford i will not take any salary from the remuneration from the organization and if we we assume that we will get 6 months of a window to operate this year so in this 6 months if we make profits beyond the kind of so we will release this as a bonus to our employees as a uh, because there have been salary cuts so that's i i Right. so at times we work with uh, head but at the, most of the time but you need to have a heart in place to paisa to aata rahega yaar agar abhi tak paisa kamaya hai wo inhi se kamaya hai and honestly a lot of people you know uh, uh, this covid crisis started from the march so we have you have all mm-hmm. completed one fiscal so you can if, right. if you have made money you can always blow up some part of it to actually uh, save jobs so that is the job that Right. That as a job creator you have that responsibility so if this doesn't get too long we have still you know map uh, uh, our budgets for next three months so we are, we are, we are anticipating that another three months will be still you know rolling out and uh, there are certain works which are still going on right now uh, mm-hmm. part of it the large part of it is hampered but still we have retained our employees so money will come because you know, if I, i have a talent with me if i have a team with me so my money money will follow and we make quite a uh, substantial amount of money uh, in a year right right no i i can understand that okay so on this note i want to ask you don't ask divide, you. divide the wealth so mm. and i don't think uh, you are an entrepreneur right 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 so so on this note uh I want to ask you one thing. The this is specifically about your insights and your viewpoint, nothing from the mindset part. But so, uh, talking to many people, I'm understanding this thing very, very much that uh, being an entrepreneur, that it's mostly about the other people. It's for a bigger cause and less about ourselves. Because when we work for the bigger cause, we ourselves grow. That's the outcome. That's a bonus point. Actually, it should give you a kick. Right. Hey, if you tell me what is your high point of life today, I take a great pride in Sarthak uh, more than the money I have made 
what gives me a huge kick is that I am a provider for almost uh, one and a half thousand people. So, and I have created, right. I have created something which is a great organization. And uh, honestly speaking, I have got multiple offers of you know investment uh, from big media giants. So, right. speaking that 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 the kick or that is the kind of an achievement you have. Entrepreneurs always don't you know chase money after a particular stage. You know, you do you don't have that. Uh, you only chase money. You all also chase what the passion of create the happiness of the create creating something. Is something you know it gives you a huge yeah. satisfaction. I, I can. That's that's what I wanted I to know. I can completely agree agree to that. Perfect. So uh, now what I want to ask you is that uh, <laughs> I'm actually falling shorts of questions, but you you've got so much of experience. So sir, from your experience, uh, if you want to give out a mantra. Or if you, there's something that you follow very strictly in your business, what would that be? And what would that thing be that, you know, you would advise to the listeners? I would uh, advise the new age entrepreneurs if they have a passion for the business. If they are they're happy by the end of the day, they come back and they don't have a regret, you know, or mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a challenge or a hiccup and they, they have a regret. Why did we do it? So I don't think they will succeed in their uh, lives. So the success will come in even if you have challenges, you have problems, you, and the passion quotient is very, very critical. So if you have a passion quotient in you, money will follow. Create value, create differentiation, uh, idea, scale it up, speed it up, but don't only chase money. If you start uh, creating value, money will follow. Value for, for all stakeholders. When I say value, value is not for the uh, uh, as an organization for the clients for right. employees you know when you when you create value for everyone you know somebody was uh, telling me what is your purpose you know do you do anything uh, uh, socially or uh, this thing honestly speaking i don't do much on the social front i think mm-hmm. if i have 1500 people with me if i can uh, better their lives uh, through uh, you know incentivizing them through bringing in some uh, you know value in uh, growth value in their uh, careers so i think even I, I, I have done my bit that's 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 something i completely understand okay so on this very note only uh, i i'm pretty sure that uh, you also mentioned it and uh, i'm just putting in some someone's studies that you know there's this hierarchy triangle that exists uh, out of study if i'm not wrong that is maslow's hierarchy triangle from just naming him right that at the epitome is the peace and in terms of peace, it means that we are doing something for the, for the society. Yes. Okay. And uh, this is what all the riches of the riches are doing right now. We talk about Bill Gates. Steve, uh, Steve Jobs is gone. But yeah, he's also doing, he also did something. Warren Buffett and uh, Mr. Bharadwaj and all those people, they're doing something for the society. So if I talk about you, you're already providing jobs to those uh, 1,500 people out there. But what is your even bigger goal? What is that one chance if, I, if you're given that, to change things or do something better for the society? What is yeah, that thing that you yeah. are willing to Arthur, do? Uh, uh, you know, a very interesting question, honestly speaking. I believe right. charity begins at home. And right. I'm not Bill Gates or I'm not uh, Ambani or uh, Azim Premji. I don't know those kind of offers to, you know, actually uh, do some social good. So what I tend to do, mm-hmm. if I see uh, who are at the uh, bottom of my pyramid uh, in terms of employees. And say probably the drivers or uh, peons or you know low-paid employees of the organization, we fund most of the education of their kids uh, with uh, from my personal uh, expenses as in, in, in the organization. So I tend to do certain things, or you know, if, if you have a large set of employees and uh, you have they, they, they will have a lot of lot of cha- at, uh, at times a lot of challenges at home. I have helped people in building their, uh, you know, homes in uh, Delhi where rentals was, you know, after a particular time becoming unsustainable for them. So I'm trying to uh, help and that is possible only when you are profitable. You got a point? You right. allowed to do so many things in life. So keeping the profit in mind and then having a purpose of, you know, doing something uh, good parallelly, you know, it's that, that's very, very common. And then you need to choose what you want to do. So I would rather believe in doing charity at home. So for me, the entire, uh, I call it a family. So I call this entire family uh, 
you know see the well-being of this family so that's that's how we uh, do some little bit of work that's a different outlook but that's really sweet so that's really very sweet <laughs> okay so uh, so with this uh, we have, we have reached the end of the podcast but before i actually end it this thing that we do is that uh, you know we ask you to recommend me another entrepreneur whom you think is has a very inspiring journey and i can call him on the podcast and we can talk about his her, or her journey uh, so please whom would you recommend lots of uh, entrepreneur friends but i would recommend uh, you know if if people have to get an idea on how to make it big so right. you can speak to uh, sabaz joseph of uh, bizcraft I can, okay. I can always put in a word. So uh, he's one of the guys you can uh, start. So he started in a very, very similar way, in a small way, and then made it one of the largest event agency in the country. Who doesn't know Westcraft? I would say <laughs> definitely. It would be an honor to have him on the show and talk about his journey. That would genuinely be a very, very he, great he, honor. Very, very big and. Uh, and because i think his journey uh, in my space i created uh, a big uh, rural marketing outfit he created a big uh, event management company so i can i can uh, recommend uh, sabas thank you thank you so much for recommending him sir so we'll make sure that he comes on the show and when as soon as he comes when his podcast goes out we'll make sure that his links are also there with you and you can listen to him and hey your links are with him so he can listen to your show sure, sure but but that sir uh, i want to thank you so much for coming on the show yeah. for taking out your precious time yeah. and yeah. giving it to yeah. us always you know you feel very happy of sharing your slices of the journey yes and your journey has been great and amazing and this was really necessary because you the the point you at which you're standing there's a very different perspective at which you look because being a youngster myself i know a lot of your lot of young people but then you know there's just there is something that comes from you also and when if i'm i'm going to try that you know somehow if i can bridge this gap where generation gap which the generation gap creates and we somehow uh intend to lose those learnings which come from you uh, and the smaller and the younger people if i can bridge it i hope so i can, i can do something i'm just i'll just try to bridge that but yes your journey has been very very insightful for all of us thanks thank you so much again thank sir you. for coming on the show pleasure talking to you thank you same here sir thank you i hope that you're able to take back something insightful from this podcast and apply it in your life to be a better version of yourself and add to your dhandoni soch if you know someone whom you think should feature on my podcast and has a very inspiring entrepreneurial journey then do drop me a dm on my instagram s a r t h a k v a r s h n e y sarthak varshna yeah that's me I'm the founder of SV Clicks and SV Clicks is the producer of this show. You can find me on Facebook or LinkedIn as well with the same name. If you are willing to listen to more of such unheard inspiring stories of the entrepreneurs, then don't forget to follow us by pressing that follow button on your podcast screen. Thank you for being such an amazing audience. Keep learning, keep growing. We'll be back soon. See ya.